Hello. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Things going okay there? Things are things are okay. We are holding steady in the storm, you know. Excellent. Very good. Oh, I see Lee's coming on. Hello. Excellent. Carol Ann um, is going to join next week. She's still trying, but she doesn't think she can join tonight. Okay, very good. Let's see if she chimes in. Um, Cassie confirmed, Heidi confirmed, Rob confirmed, Joe, Lisa. We'll see. Oh, here's um, Joe's contact coming in right now. It's Joe. Hey, Joe, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Joe? Good to hear from you. That was Lee. Oh, the highly <laughs> hey, Jude. Remote, remote working. Very <laughs> gotta gotta get used to this, huh? Whole new thing. Very good. Got my wine tonight. <laughs> hey, Jude. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm having some. Hi, internet. everyone. He's got the digital freeze going. I know. On. Hi, Joe. Hi. 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 There you are. You kind of froze, Jude. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I've got some internet things going on here. So hopefully okay. be able to get through this. We'll see um, what's next. Hopefully uh, everyone else will come online here um, and we can see, but we've got some, I, I think Joe, um, did, uh, Claude uh, may, may be coming on board as well tonight, I think. She had confirmed. Yeah, his internet's kind of. I. Sorry, everybody. Internet issues. Hi, Rob. Hi. How are you? Hello, dude. How are you? <laughs> very good. Very good. We are, you know, working remotely, dealing with some internet freezes. So, you know, as as you know, um, but I think we should just, you know, start because everyone's, you know, there's enough people here. Um, and so everyone can meet each other. And most of you know that this is Heart Center Tech Networking. It's peer to peer. Uh, everyone has nominated each other in, in some way throughout the organization. And I'm uh, trying to keep this going um, for Senator Ben Allen, Congressman uh, Ted Lieu, and Assemblyman Richard Bloom. So you've all been some way nominated um, or received certificates and awards from them. And I think we can just, uh, with everyone that's here, if anyone else comes on board while we're kind of going through our networking agenda, we'll just kind of uh, introduce them when we have a hot minute to do that. And in the meantime, um, I'd just like to just kind of do this somewhat, we did this last week, just kind of like a, you know, uh, just like roll calling and, and just kind of treating it as uh, just an agenda of introductions so that we can all meet each other. Um, and if there's any nominations that come on board, we can, we can talk about them. But why don't we first, you know, start with um, everyone that's here. So uh, Lisa Tolls is here, you're from San Francisco, and uh, you are heading up our chapter up there. So uh, why don't you give us a little heads up on what's happening in San Francisco? Yeah, um, I, I live in Oakland, but, um, but I recently started the San Francisco chapter. Hello, everyone. Um, nice to see you again, Joe. Um, see you. Uh, and Rob, nice to meet you. I, I, I'd never seen you before, so yes, hello. <laughs> um, we, we have a couple new members of the San Francisco chapter that we've been excited to onboard recently. And so now we have about a handful of people and it's growing. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm just trying to keep my energy and my positivity up to be the absolute best that I can right now in the world. Excellent, very good. Um, so this week, um, last week, Lisa, you had you got your award. This week, um, and Joe also, you got your award last week. So wanted to just move into this week's award recipients, and then we'll go back and get uh, Joe and Lisa, you guys introduced to these guys as well. So Lee, why don't you tell us a little bit about you know yourself to the group, and um, you got your award from Congressman Ted Lieu. So. Uh, 
Let's just let us that was very know. surprising. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, I'm Lisa's husband. Actually, I'm just upstairs, but uh, <laughs> I'm a I'm a uh, high school teacher. Uh, I do a lot of STEM stuff in science and math. So, um, and uh, we do heart centered tech every day. That's what we do. This you know, getting our youth, you know, building you know, minds that are going to go out there and, and actually uh, really become heart-centered tech leaders of their own one day, you know. So anyway, Jude and Lisa pulled me into this organization. It's great to be here. Good to meet you guys. And like Lisa, I'm, uh, you know, it's day by day trying to stay busy at home. We've had no trouble staying busy at home, but, you know, but it's good. Great. Glad to have you here. Uh, Cassie, nice to have you on board. Glad you could make it. Can we, I don't know if we can hear you. Okay, we can't hear you, Cassie. Maybe you could. No, I'm just me. muted. Can oh, you hear me now? there you are. Okay, thanks. Oh, I hear her now and see her now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was muted. Uh, you want me to intro? Introduce you know, yourself? Yeah, why don't you, why don't you jump in, Cassie, do an intro. Um, you um, got your award. Every week we do awards with some, you know, new people. Your new award winner this week. We have some people on board from last week and just getting the networking going and introducing everybody to each other. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and the awesome work that you do with Urban Tech and all that stuff that got you your award. Well, thank you. Well, thanks for the award, first of all. That was super cool. Uh, so I um, own a fashion tech company called District 2. I started in 2014. That's how I know Jude. We're in the same pre-accelerator, Stubbs, Alderton, and Mark Elise. Um, I think that's how we met, right, Jude? Yes, it is. Isn't how we met? Yeah, so, um, so uh, I have worked uh, in the inner city, South Central specifically. I was born um, in South LA. I was a homeless teen. I um, got into fashion and then I started mentoring uh, young girls uh, in the fashion industry. And then I got into tech, uh, fashion tech specifically because I saw a need um, that needed to be filled. And so I filled that. Um, so um, I am building a tech center in South Central. It's a 10,000 square foot building um, with the um, gracious, uh, generous help of the Annenberg Foundation. Best Buy, uh, Pledge LA, which is uh, the mayor's initiative. Um, we are building this this tech center, which is kind of my baby um, that I, I brought to them. So um, yeah, that's what we're working on. I've been teaching kids to code. I'm a full stack developer myself. Um, I've been teaching kids to code um, since 2014. Nice. Um, and at the tech center, we do all things tech, animation, um, our specific tech center will be very media focused because uh, we believe that in that specific, you know, brown and black community, um, we need to control the narrative because that's kind of the way the, the, the character of the black man was assassinated in the first place was because of media. Um, and so we want to change that narrative. We want to give the youth there that power. So we're very uh, media strong with uh, film and photography. Um, we have a recording studio uh, that we're building out. Um, and of course, software development, animation. So we just want to have more um, creators instead of consumers. That's kind of the focus of my work. Nice. This is very good. I've seen you do some amazing things there with some young minds and giving them some wonderful head start in life, which I think is really beautiful. And um, I think that everyone here, in some way, we're all um, executives or run teams, things like that. And um, I'm honored and very happy to have Rob Whitfield here tonight. Um, his company, see, he's the CEO of Farazi Greenlight, and uh, he is specializes in shift management, team performance, and just recently, you, you guys launched a um, virtualteamswin.com website I want to let everyone know about. Um, it's got some great videos in it for um, remote working, accountability with teams. You can't see how to kick off details of projects. And uh, Rob, I'll, I guess I'll let you, you take it from here because I'm sure um, you've gotten a lot of, uh, you've probably got some insights on uh, remote 
working and team building and all those things. But uh, I'll let you take it from here. And congratulations, uh, being a heart centered tech leader and what you do internationally with all the corporations you work with. So thank you. Thank you, G. This is a real honor. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you. Hello, everybody. I, I was going to make a joke that I'm also Lisa's husband and I'm just downstairs, but maybe that's, uh, maybe that's inappropriate. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I live in Los Angeles. Don't be fooled by my accent. It's not uh, interference on the line. I'm originally from, from London. Uh, as Jude mentioned, I run uh, Ferrazzi Greenlight. We're a behavior change research institute, and we look at how the way we think and behave in organizations um, can affect the impact and the results that the organizations can achieve. So we are typically we're doing a lot of flying around the world and uh, meeting with people in our experiential learning and coaching sessions. But at the moment we're doing that um, basically just sitting here, um, which is very different for me uh, because I'm normally on an airplane or going to a hotel or a conference center doing keynote speaking and such like. But it's actually really nice. The downside of that for me personally is that means I have to do all the things that I said I would do when I had time. Now I've, I've got no excuse not to do those. Um, from a remote point of view, we are seeing huge demand uh, around how we can help organizations effectively shift into remote working, virtual working environments. Uh, and to give an example of that, we've been working with a large uh, international organization and just in the last couple of weeks, we've helped them uh, not just move from a technology point of view, although that is important, but get 500 of their call center team members um, to be effective in the work that they're doing um, from their own homes now. Um, so it starts with that technology piece, the tools piece, but really then it's a mindset and behavioral piece and the practices that fall from that the focus on what is your meeting hierarchy, what are the cadence of the meetings to drive to results, um, and then are you recontracting those behaviors? Because the behaviors that you had when you could just walk into your uh, next door neighbor's office or when you would give them a quick call to see how they're doing, they shift um, during virtual work. So as, as Jude mentioned, virtualteamswin.com is a good uh, resource. Um, it's all free. Uh, we put up there this content from HBR, which we've published amongst other things. Our chairman and founder is Keith Ferrazzi. He wrote uh, New York Times best-selling books, uh, Who's Got Your Back and Never Eat Alone, which I'm sure you've heard of in some way. And uh, his new book, uh, which is out um, in a month, a month, uh, two months time, um, is about leading uh, without authority. So how you can use the power of your networks and your influence with whether or not you have positional power in an organization to make um, to make decisions, how you can still achieve your goals. And it sounds like, based on uh, what Cassie was saying, that she's certainly a master of leading without authority. So well done to you and the work that you've achieved. So that's about me. Um, I'm sure that Jude will be sharing our uh, contact details and I invite, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, I'd invite you to do so. Happy to, to have further conversation. Yeah, certainly. Everyone at the end of these sessions, everyone will get everyone else's emails. They'll get a recording of the session just in case they need to visit something else and a link to that. And then every week, uh, every Tuesday, we, we do this so we can punch back in or, or not. Um, and uh, we have um, Joe and Jennifer here and maybe they can do a little quick intro of themselves to the group. Are you guys Absolutely. Then do you want to start? Sure. Hey guys, my name is Jennifer Freiling and I actually work with Joe at Quantine. Um, he'll tell you more about it, but we're a company that's innovating the future of medicine through early cancer detection. Um, so excited to be here. Very good. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone for meeting up. I know it's everyone is quarantined and it's uh, interesting times. So I'm the CEO of Quantin. Um, we are launching a product this year, hopefully very soon, Quantin Serenity. Initially, this will be a cancer detection uh, system. So we use blood samples and expert physicians and genetic uh, counselors to look at um, circulating tumor DNA in the blood. And that allows us to detect eight uh, dangerous cancers at early stages. Uh, significantly before symptoms and or before you would normally detect them. 
and that is the first step in, into a, a bigger system where we have this uh, audacious goal, but we are pretty confident we can get there um, of a decade within a decade. So to extend human lifespan, the average human lifespan by 10 years within the next 10 years and by bringing together the world's most advanced medical technologies. Uh, and we start doing that with, with our cancer system. Excellent. And you had a nom you, your nomination was Chloe, and I, I know that she is in the medical industry and is very active. Um, I had spoken to her over the weekend, just so you know that we did connect. Um, and she's been doing 10,000 masks in the next two days and she uh, worked 14 hours straight so um, you know it was uh, didn't know whether she was gonna make it tonight or not but she said she would try um, and and that's the part um, about the group that uh, continues on so for Rob and Cassie um, you kind of now have the hot potato so you know it's it's looking for a nomination that you can bring into the group and you know um, they are someone of like mind and someone of you know executive levels c level etc that are part of this and i will then you know submit that nomination to the politicians and they look at the list and they choose and they they give out the certificates and so that's how it works on my end um you 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 pick the next it's a peer-to-peer -peer networking organization so that's how that works so and every tuesday night um we'll be able to if you have nominations come on board then we'll be able to do those every tuesday night so that's how we're trying to move forward with heart center tech so that you can meet new people digitally remotely which is <laughs> kind of strange in a way and just kind of meet all these new people all at once um but it's a great i think it's a a thing that we we need to keep doing um to be human and keep our connections going and at the same time talk about things that you know we may need to discuss or or want to talk about so as far as you know heart center tech goes i think that's like everything as far as you know introductions go with everybody and i think we can have just a couple minutes of just kind of an op open forum and and cassie um you have a question or you wanted to yeah um, so you, uh, we just choose one person you want to nominate we are to nominate one other person yeah you can do one in LA or you can do multiple people if it's another area like um, Joe has two one in LA and one in San Francisco so if there's another area or another city that you kind of want to work with or you want to nominate someone there that's great but then they're they're launching a new chapter basically in a whole new thread with that group as well. So it just depends on what you wanna do. Um, I've been out here in Florida working with Tampa at Embark Collective, um, and they're gonna be on next week or the following week. Um, they're uh, funded by the Gates Foundation to help launch a lot of tech in uh, Florida. So um, there's two women there that are doing great, great work, and they'll come into the group at some point based on you know when their schedule allows. <laughs> So that's kind of uh, what I'm doing out here. But yeah, you can uh, nominate whoever you feel is going to, uh, you know, meet the, the credentials of what the group has been basically, just heart-centered leadership and what you feel that really embodies. And that's, that's the part of meeting everybody here is to discover heart-centered tech and what heart-centered tech leadership is. And I have, I, I think just to kind of round this off and was that the end of your question, Cassie? Do you have any more questions? No, that's it. Okay. Thank great. you. Well, I think, um, I, I don't, I, in order to, uh, you know, continue the heart center tech network, I think we can just kind of maybe do like a quick little round Robin here and maybe assist each other in these times, um, with any tricks or secrets to, how you're handling being a heart-centered tech leader, doing this remote, all these remote in, you know, processes that we're going through right now. If anyone's got any tips on what they think of for leadership like that, I just maybe we can just hit each one and just go over some things that we're trying to do for hey, our Jude. leadership skills. Hey Jude, can you hear me? 
Yes, go ahead. Yes. I was wondering if I could ask kind of a question of everyone. What is the most surprising discovery you've made since the coronavirus transition started? So one that I've made that's been a really um, positive one is that I'm not spending time driving and parking and leaving my office to find something to eat and waiting in lines. And as a result, I've been so much more productive. I sit in one place. Sometimes I sit there for too long and I don't get up and take breaks. That's the bad thing. But I have so much more focus because, you know, I get food and I bring it back to this place where I'm working. And then I go and get water and then I go for a walk and then I come back. And I'm, I'm so much more productive because I'm just kind of like planted here and I see that as a positive thing. So I was wondering if you guys are also kind of discovering like positive little um, surprising nuggets that you've taken away from this. Um, kind of unexpected period. Cassie, excellent. Thank you. Cassie. Oh, Cassie. Okay. Uh, so, no, you had your um, hand raised. <laughs> oh, did I? Okay. <laughs> was, it, was it from before? It wasn't, but I'll take it. Okay. Um, I think the most positive thing that I see, so so being that, so our tech center is um, in partnership with Vermont Sloss and Economic Development Corporation. It's actually where I started my tech company before I went to Stubbs Alderton. And via CDC, they um, basically help startups and small businesses in South Central, the South LA area. And those businesses, businesses are extremely, they're not with us as far as like 2020 digitally, um, you know, and I've been like really trying to kind of um, get even Vermont's lost in, like they have no virtual digital infrastructure whatsoever. They had none. So basically, um, I'm helping them to build that. Basically, the things that I've been asking them to do for years, they literally did it like in, in a day. They approved everything, you know, that I've been trying to get them to do. Slack, you know, like uh, some type of pro project management system, you know, um, Zoom, because I was like, I don't need to come into the office every day. I'm, you know, we're techies. We're, we're entrepreneurs. So if you guys have like these regular clients that, that are, you know, nine to five corporate clients, they, they want you to come in all the time. I don't need to come in. I could be in Italy doing this, you know? So, well, not now, but you know, <laughs> I do love Italy. I do plan to go. But anyway, the positive I see is that it's forcing um, people to kind of get with the, get with the program as far as working remotely. It, it's way like, like, um, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. The previous uh, woman said it's way more productive, you know, to let, let people work from home and, um, yeah, it's a proven fact that actually if you let um, part of your employees work from home, they're, they're just way more productive. So that's um, the good that I see. It's helping um, the South LA economy for sure. Excellent. Excellent. Anyone else want to go? Someone else up here? I mean, one thing that I observed, which is unexpected and not a small thing, I realize more and more is um, how beautiful LA becomes when everyone stays at home. So I'm talking about the sky and the air. So I think it's a very big difference. I just took a walk around Echo uh, Park Lake and it's a significantly better air quality. So I think there's this weird effect on the environment. You see it also in China and everywhere. Um, that it's it, it kind of made me more aware of how big of an impact we actually have on the environment, not in an abstract like global climate change uh, way, which might also be important, but it's less direct. But just here, you know, every day you go out, you know, it could be a, it's, it's very beautiful nature where we actually live at. And that nature gets a little bit ruined by our everyday, uh, you know, kind of conduct. So I was very surprised how big the difference actually is. I don't know exactly what that means. I don't have a solution, but I'm just observing that and it's kind of surprising. Nice. Yeah, I heard Niagara Falls, like the springs are coming back and it's not polluted anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I'm visiting it, so it's coming back. That's interesting. I'll go next, Jude. Okay. Uh, so one of the things I've noticed that in this enforced stop, right, everybody has to stop. People aren't traveling, people are at home. 
Uh, some people are really worried about that. And the people that are worried about that are the people who haven't fully lent into this opportunity. Right? The people who are going to um, succeed coming out of this, that will probably leapfrog three years ahead, five years ahead of where they would have otherwise been, are the people who take this moment and embrace it. And yes, okay, it's a worrying time, but embrace this opportunity. Um, enjoy the pause and use that time to think while there are fewer people driving around, running around, wanting to meet them in person, to really curate what the future looks like for them and their businesses. And that is what I have seen to be the most effective use of this time. Use this, lean into it, and get the most out of it. And in hopefully one or two or maybe three months' time, those are the people that will be able to say, look at what I did and look where we are now. Nice. Yeah, it is. You have to, I mean, adaptability is <laughs> key right now. Um, totally key. Also, put, for me, it's been also pushing away um, disappointments for things not going the way they were supposed to go. Um, Heart Center Tech was supposed to be this amazing <laughs> dinner parties and award ceremonies and open bar and amazing food and people networking. And, um, you know, it's, I'm, I'm glad it's, you know, we're still able to move forward with the network. It has been grinded down to its absolute core of people meeting each other and just raw networking. And I think that, you know, for me, it's, it's to just be in, be in service um, with, Heart centered tech without looking for the same rewards that I used to get from this. Um, I've gotten now different awards from it, rewards from it. And the fact that it didn't come to a grinding halt is, is amazing to me that you're all here and you're taking the time to do this. Um, and I very much appreciate it. I very much look forward to meeting everyone and everyone's peers that they then nominate and to be able to keep it going digitally is a blessing. And, um, uh, you know, the adapting to that has been um, something for me that has been very positive and I'm glad it's able to keep going and you're all here. So thank you. Anyone else want to go? Anybody? We well, have? Jude, we, we have the time, you know, we've been given this time, you know, and, you know, like Rob was saying, you know, to think, pause you know it says uh lisa and i have talked about this being like the earth's way of saying hey you need to stop for a little while you know the environment's liking this you know but i've always thought you know being a teacher and being up in the classroom all the time and working with kids day in and day out you know and i actually you know i do a music project so we're working with kids, helping them write songs and teaching them how to play instruments. And I'm not able to do that right now. But um, I look around and I see a lot of amazing things that people are doing for each other through this time. I just got an email while we're speaking here of my teacher's union and sharing a way that you can like donate your stimulus check to undocumented families, you know? Mm. And just, uh, Everywhere I look, I just see the way people are slowing down and finding ways to help one another. You know, even though you got to be six feet apart, they're still trying to help each other, you know. And um, yeah, working from home is interesting. You know, we're, uh, we're about to make the big switch into distance learning. And I've never done anything like that before, but uh, I'm actually really excited. I've got a lot of great projects that I'm working on right now. So. I don't want this time to go by and, and suddenly realize, man, I should have been lazier, <laughs> you know, but I want to factor in some time to be a little bit lazy, you know, but these projects are really cool. So I'm excited about them. They're all digital, you know, I think the kids are going to love them. So. <clears throat> Excellent. Thanks, Lee. Um, Jennifer, you're up. <laughs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the good ones were taken, but um, I think for me, what's been interesting is just kind of walking around the neighborhoods here and seeing to some degree how, how quickly people adapt, not just in how they work, but in how they um, rally, I guess, 
behind like, uh, you know, what needs to happen for this um, phase of life. Um, you know, I see so many people out with their families, with their dogs, with, you know, and in some ways I think there's a positive there that people get to kind of reprioritize um, who and how they spend their time, um, you know, and the quality of that time with those people. I think, you know, there is a renegotiation of what is meaningful that happens. Um, that's really beautiful. It is. It, it's, it's eerie almost when it's quiet out there too, yet peaceful. <laughs> yeah, it's oddly crowded and empty at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> More people walking, less people driving. Yeah. But Jennifer had a really good point about um, uh, about kind of quality of time that we suddenly have for each other. I mean, you know, so the pause that Rob, that you were talking about, and Lee, you know, we it, it seems like as life has slowed down, we have time to kind of like notice each other a little bit more. You know, and instead of saying like, hey, how you doing? How's it going? You know, it, it's like, say, hey, how are, you, how are you doing? And kind of pausing and waiting to like hear the answer. Unfortunately, as humans, I think, you know, we're really bad at that a lot of times. And I love that, um, that opportunity to kind of like um, go one level deeper to check in with people. How are you doing? You know, like how is your kind of mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, um, productivity well-being today and to kind of care and have time to have the luxury of that answer well it's also kind of the the, the realization of the absence of people too um that's really interesting you know it's like oh when you don't have this person just like hanging around all day like how does that change how you feel about them mm. mm -hmm. yeah and also their local nature i, I think it's kind of but yeah, it's kind of weird, like absurdly cool that I can walk around here in my little Brentwood neighborhood and I see all these things I never saw. Like how do these houses actually look like? Because it's boring, I can't do anything. So I just walk around, sit down on, a, on some bench and then you look around it's like, it's actually pretty. And then you meet the same person again the next day. So all these things normally don't happen. And it's like, oh yeah, we actually share this space and we are kind of together here and no one ever realized that before because you just oh in the morning hop in the car drive away and no one cares it's so it's kind of a weird thing if you're forced to just live like we are actually designed to live like in a local community and you're just forced to somehow by not getting away and there's definitely a very positive thing that comes from that because you connect to your local thing it's not even just the people the people are part of it but also the buildings and whatever like everything so it's like this weird effect it's kind of being a kid again and living in a village or something like in a positive way and it's very absurd because it's surreal like it's la and normally you don't do that so yeah it's it's very interesting I think I, at some point it, it will end this is not going to be forever <laughs> So, I, you know, appreciating the moments now, living in the moment, a uh, very good thing. Um, and I would like to, I guess we're getting close to time here. So I just would like to um, let you know next Tuesday, um, there'll be five more award recipients um, that will be getting their award. I'll send everybody the video so you know who's kind of coming up. I reach out to them, see if they can make the Tuesday meeting. Um, if you have nominations and you want to invite them to Tuesday night, then go right ahead. Um, these are crazy times, so some, you know, I, I get confirmations and then people can't make it, or who knows whether their tech works or whatever's happening. So we'll just kind of see who shows up every Tuesday. If anyone has any suggestions or they want to lead a Tuesday or they, they have an idea for Heart Center Tech, I'm completely open. Uh, to whatever you think this may be. This is a peer group. It's for everybody that's here. So I'm just trying to open a channel, keep it going, and any participation, feedback, completely welcome to receive. And hopefully uh, every week, we'll just keep doing this. And as it grows, it will keep growing. We have 50 men and 50 women right now. 
that are part of it. And, um, you know, we're just doing individual uh, invites every week and just kind of letting things kind of play out. So I don't know if anyone has any parting words or they want to say anything, um, go for it. <laughs> Thank yes, you. me. Hey, oh. No, go ahead, Cassie. Um, I wanted to ask you guys, um, does anyone have any workarounds, hacks, if you may, um, for the, it, like for, there was the, the guy who teaches, I believe it was guitar or something. So, you know, we have a portion of the tech center where we have equipment like drones and, and, and things like that, that um, the youth, I don't, I don't know, we're trying to just kind of think of a workaround if this goes on longer than we'd like. Um, that they would be able to still maybe come to the center, but only a few at a time, or I don't know, rent out almost like library, like check out some of our equipment. Like if you teach guitar um, and they need the guitar, you know, is that something that you guys have dealt with or anything dealing with like equipment and kind of things that are more hands-on? What have been some of your solutions to those? Uh, I think that would be a, a question for you, Lee, but I think we're going to run out of Zoom time because they only give us like 40 minutes. So you guys mm. will have emails. Can Lee, can you and Cassie do an email back and forth about that and connect? Yeah, in terms of like just getting equipment out to the students, I'm not really sure, but I do know I have an organization that I work with called Little Kids Rock. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but I can no. send you an email. They do online lessons and so on. Okay, Only, thank you. But the kids would, they'd have to have access to their own gear. You know what I mean? Like their own instruments and so on. Uh, okay. So if you're I, able to work that in, maybe some of the uh, instruction they can kind of do online. Yeah. Um, quickly, I know there's like a robotics company that does kit lending. Um, so I don't know if that's helpful or not, but I can give you their name. They just rent out the kits every week. Mm. Excellent. Very good. Well, um, Cassie and Rob, if you have nominations, usually um, just do um, an introduction with email, um, throw me in the thread, and um, I'll be able to onboard them uh, into the process. And if anyone um, wants to receive their award, like through the mail, when we're ready to, you know, when the post office is ready to go again, um, make sure you go to the certification page on Heart Center Tech and fill it out with your info and then I'll have your address and we'll be able to email, I mean, mail you your original certificates. Um, so you have them to hang on your wall and you got your bragging rights right there. So <laughs> to continue with all of that. Well, thank you everybody for this week's session of Heart Centered Tech and look forward to next week and everybody stay safe and well. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Nice to meet you all. Take care. Nice meeting you. Bye. Bye bye.